Hello, hello. Thank you for joining me. My name's Tony and I'm here with the Everyday Counts program. We have an hour together for chair yoga. And today we're going to be going through all the joints of the body. The more we move through our joints, the more movement we actually have. So as we move the joints, synovial fluid or joint juice is created and that makes it easier for us as it creates a lubrication. So it's a great thing to do every day, especially if you wake up super stiff. And remember that everything I guide you through is simply a suggestion. And every suggestion is not for everybody. So deciding for yourself, something feels good in your body today, if you want to do less of it, or if you want to change it up in your own way. There is absolutely no way of doing this wrong. So making sure you're on a comfortable and above all else, stable chair. Feel free if you want to sit into the back of this chair for support or sitting away from the back of the chair, starting to support yourself. Feet at a comfortable distance for you. And everything we do today is not going to look the same in two bodies. Our bodies are all different, we're all put together differently, and we've all got lots of different things going on. So this is more about how it feels from the inside than what it looks like from the outside. Rooting down into the support underneath you. So maybe you want to pick those toes up or even the balls of the feet if you like, those ankles a little bit of a wiggle. And then spread the toes really nice and wide as if you're trying to stretch the tips of your feet, tips of your toes as far away from your heels as you can. Keep that, take the balls of the feet down if they were lifted and then gently drift the toes down too. And leave them nice and soft. Take all of your awareness down to the soles of your feet and it doesn't matter whether you've got shoes or socks on. A great way of doing this is to close the eyes or lower the gaze. A great way to do this is to close the eyes or soften or lower the gaze. This tunes us inwards instead of focusing us on the outside world. There's nothing you need to see from me at the moment. So we take all our awareness down to the surface underneath us. And from there, notice what you notice. You might notice sensation or texture. And then be curious as to whether you have more weight in one foot than the other. See if you can even that up as best as you're able. And then pushing down evenly through both feet, just gently add a little bit of pressure, about five or 10 percent, just enough to light up the upper legs. Maybe you might even feel it in the lower belly. And then on an exhale, let that soften away. And after we soften that away, relax and release through the lower body, allowing yourself to really be supported and held here. And then we'll take the awareness up to our seat. Depending on the kind of chair you're on, you might be able to feel your sitting bones as you wheel from side to side, right underneath you. That's the base of the pelvis, just like we did with the feet, evening that up as best as we're able. And allow the pelvis to be as neutral as possible. So the shoulders are neither forward of the hips or back of the hips, they're stacked right on top, and that'll give the pelvis this neutral quality. Take a big breath in, and on the exhale, change the upper body weight to be seated down into the chair. So a big <sighs> relaxing that upper body weight down. Mm -hmm. And then from there, from the pelvic floor, from right between those sitting bones, imagine lifting up through the center line of the body, crown of the head is lifting, so we get this elongation through the torso. So we're grounded from the pelvis down and we're getting just a little bit taller. Roll the shoulders back and down a couple of times, maybe the first time today. And then settle the shoulders down and away from your ears in your own way. So we're getting this spaciousness. And then we'll draw the shoulder blades a little wider or the shoulder blades a little closer towards each other. And then we get this broadness across the chest. 
So from the pelvis down, we're grounded. This is rooting. And then we're rising from there and getting this broadness. This gives us a mindful posture and it also allows us as much space in our torso as we can for our organs to do their work. Keep this mindful posture. Take a breath in when you're ready. On an exhale, make any adjustments you need to for this to feel sustainable for you. Mm-hmm. It might feel, if this is your first time for a mindful seat, it might feel a little bit awkward. But get comfortable and familiar with this new sensation. You might notice different places in your body. If there's any fatigue creeping up or any discomfort, please try and adjust anything you need to to make it your mindful seat. Mm -hmm. And then we'll keep the shape, soften the gaze or lower the gaze or close the eyes and we'll do our little check-in. And we do a check-in to notice how we're doing in this moment and for that to inform our practice. So ask yourself the question, how am I doing in this moment? Allow whatever to arise up. Be curious, but no judgments. And stories will want to arise. Just notice the stories. And then ask yourself, what's on my mind today? And just allow everything to be there. Nothing to fix or change or judge. Just be curious. Huh, my mind's thinking about this thing. Or maybe lots of things. See if you can deepen into yourself and notice if there are any emotions present. A lot of the time we never really pay attention to all of these things. So this is a great opportunity to pause and really check in with yourself. It's kind of like a little report card. Again, not needing to change anything, just being aware. And then we start to notice how our body is feeling today. And a great way to do that is to start right at the soles of your feet and draw your awareness like a body scan up slowly through the body. Noticing as you draw your awareness up sensations. Maybe there are very familiar loud sensations. Stay away from the stories. And the stories I mean, ah, oh, my knee's hurting. That is because da 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 da. That's the story. Just, ha, huh, I have sensation in my knee. All the way up through the body. Notice tightness, tension, discomfort, all the way up to the crown of the head. Beautiful. In your own time, when you're ready, then start to scan down the body, noticing the places of spaciousness, ease, quietness. If one side of your body is hurting in a particular area, notice the other side. So we start to allow our brain to get the whole picture instead of only focusing on the challenges. And what we focus on, we feel. So we want a whole picture instead of just going on and on and on about, ah, I've got that feeling in my left shoulder. All the way down to the soles of your feet until you once more notice the surface underneath you or the texture of the surface. Mm -hmm. Allowing any tension in your body to start to soften as best as you're able. And then we start to tap into the breath, noticing the breath coming in and out. And again, eyes soft, lower door closed is a great way to really tune in. We start to deepen the inhale and lengthen the exhale. In your own way, you can't do this wrong. There's no way to breathe in a wrong way. See if you can breathe in and out through the nose if that's comfortable for you. And if it's not, then just simply your easy way. In and out. A little deeper, a little longer, until you've come to a somewhat new rhythm. And it may not be very different from when you started, and that's okay. You're not looking to achieve anything. And then we start to smooth the breath out, steadying it all the way to the top of the breath, smoothing it all the way down to the bottom of the breath. And why we spend so much time on this check-in and this breath is because it informs our practice going forward. 
and the breath will be the key to every movement. So we smooth the breath out, steadying it up, smoothing it out so it becomes this regulated breath. We regulate the breath, we regulate the nervous system, regulate the central nervous system, we regulate everything else. So this is one of the quickest tools you have to regulate yourself, it regulates your body, regulates your mind. We regulate breath, it helps us manage pain and discomfort, helps us manage our anxiety. And then with this new steady breath, if there's any forcing of the breath or any straining, let it go, even if the breath gets a little smaller, so it becomes manageable, sustainable, so for the next hour, if all we did was sit and breathe, then it feels like it would be perfectly fine for you. So these are the breaths. Steady, smooth breaths. And then if you want to, start to listen to the sound of that breath. The breath coming in, the breath leaving. And you might notice that the sound of the inhale and the exhale is a little different. Just a little. And I'm going to give you a mantra. A mantra is a tool for the mind. That's the direct translation from Sanskrit. And it is a sound to keep you focused on the breath. This is another way of keeping the thoughts to the minimum so we have something to focus on. So on the inhale, the sound so, S-O, from the bottom of the inhale to the top. And on the exhale, hum, H-U-M, all the way down to the bottom. So, hum. So, hum. And you might notice that the sound so, hum, you can blend it with the sound of your breath. And if this is not your thing, let it go, no big deal. Like I said, every suggestion is not for everybody. It's just a way to anchor ourselves in a little deeper into that breath. So hum breath, a steady, smooth breath. So we work down, feet in seat, rise from there once more. We get a little mindful with our postures, the shoulders, settle back and down, those collarbones broaden. And then from here, on the inhale, let's lift up through the right ear. And then exhale back through center, and then we'll lift up through the left ear. Keep the hands supported. Keep the breath moving. So we inhale as we lift the ear, exhale back through center. Notice if you're holding the breath to get just a little bit more at the top of that inhale and see if you can stay away from that. So the body likes it when we ease into movement rather than pushing and straining. What will happen as we push and strain is that everything contracts to keep us safe. So we want to stay in that place of ease. If this feels like enough sensation, stay here. If you want to add a little bit, you can dangle those hands down. If you've got arms on your chair, you can bend those elbows, of course. Lifting on the inhale. So we're getting that length through the side of the neck. Nicely done. Next time we take the left ear towards the left shoulder, I'm mirroring you. Let's take the left hand up to support the head and then push the right hand away. So we need a little flex in the wrist here and breathe. If your head is coming forward, slide it back over the heart space a little. You might even notice this activating through the core. Let's take one more breath here, staying for that exhale. And then come up through center, releasing both hands. Let's just go from side to side again. And then the next time the right ear comes towards the right shoulder, let's stay there. Option to take the right hand to the top left side of the head, supporting head over heart so we're not coming forward here. And then option to send those left palms away Breathing and through the left side of the neck. If there's any small or big adjustments you want to make to get into a sweet spot, please do. Stay for the last exhale. 
And when you're ready, we come up through center and release. Nicely done. Hands back through support. Staying up in the cervical spine for a little bit, rooting to rise, regulating the breath. This is the inhale and the exhale. Let's just glance over towards the right. Inhale through center and then glancing over to the left. Keeping those collarbones nice and broad so we're not shifting the shoulders forward and back, getting the rotation through the spine. Lower than the collarbones. Mm -hmm. Next time the chin comes to the right, option to stay there option to dip the chin down and then start to create little circles or figure of eights getting into the left side of the neck. Keeping that left shoulder back in space, you can even dangle the left hand down. And then when you're ready, hand comes back to support. And then we'll draw up and over to the other side, the left side this time. Stay here. We'll dip the chin down over that left shoulder. A little stillness or movement. That right shoulder or right arm can come back in space. Getting into those sweet spots in the neck. Remember, we're still connected to the breath. And then when you're ready, hand comes back to support. And we're coming up. Big breath in. Exhale it out. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. And then from here, we're going to be with our head over heart. On the inhale, we're going to come with the chin forward. And on the exhale, we're going to draw the head back in space. Coming forward. And then as if you're trying to lean the base of your skull back into an imaginary wall, forward and back. Trying to make that kind of double chin as you draw the head back in space. Nicely done. For most of us, we spend our time with our head forward. And that creates a whole lot of tension, this is the last one, we'll come back through center. Whole lot of tension through the neck, upper shoulders, and that trickles all the way down into our lower back. Our head is one of the heaviest places in our body. And for every inch forward it is, it adds 10 pounds of pressure on to the upper shoulders and the upper back. So I'm remembering that mindful seat, head bounced over the heart, over the hip, shoulders more or less over the hips as well. And then from here, let's dangle that right hand down. And actually, let's take both hands down, do them together. And then we're gonna circle through the shoulders here. Keep connected to the breath. Inhaling round and up, exhaling round and down, whichever direction you're going in, it does not matter. And maybe this is the first time today that you're really moving through the shoulders. What we're looking for here is not the biggest range of motion, we're looking for the smoothest. So just like you smooth the breath, so you can smooth the movement. And then at the end of the exhale, we'll pause and take those circles round in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Notice how this feels. Last one here. Nicely done. Any um, tension relieving movements, please go ahead. And then we're going to take those arms up in a cactus and towards or uh, let the fingertips sit either towards or on those shoulders. You can draw those elbows down if those arms feel pretty heavy or bringing them up towards shoulder height, but no more. And then from here, I'm going to draw the elbows in towards each other up out, back, and down. Rooting to rise through the spine, so this really is isolated through the shoulders, so we're not arching or rounding through the spine quite yet. 
Maybe those elbows come towards each other. Maybe they never get there. It just depends on the length of your bones. And again, this is not about the biggest movement. This is about the control and the smoothness. There are always areas that we like to rush through. Let's see if we can slow those down. And then at the end of the next exhale, we'll pause and take that round in the opposite direction. Again, spine is as neutral as possible. Noticing everything you're feeling. Always adjusting things. Of course, we connect it to the breath, that steady, so home breath. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Next exhale, we're coming back through center. Let's take those hands down. Give them a little wiggle. I'm gonna turn the palms out. And you might notice that one side is a very different rotation from the other. Draw the shoulder blades towards each other. On the exhale, we'll turn the palms down, round, maybe back behind you. So it's a little rotation there. This is not just in the hands and forearms. This is rotating through the shoulders. So on that inhale, we get this broadness across the upper chest, the pectoral muscles. On the exhale, the back of the body, the shoulders start to get a little broader. Option to stay here if you want to add a little bit of um, strengthening, lifting the arms up towards shoulder height. And again, inhaling and exhaling, keep connected to the breath always. Let's take one more exhale here. And then when we're ready, we'll take those hands down. Hands into a tight or soft fist and circling through the wrists here. Nice and slow, squeezing, and then we'll take those around in the opposite direction. Beautiful, we'll release that, spread the fingers out really wide, as far as they can get from each other in the thumbs. Then as if you had a piece of paper in your hand, just scrunching it up. And again, we're getting into all the joints here, creating that synovial fluid. Let's inhale. The slowness is the medicine here. And then curling it in. Mm -hmm. Let's do two or three more of those. And notice with curiosity what you're experiencing. Always adjust things if you need to. Last one here, more or less but always adjusting things for your body. Let's take a breath in, exhaling it out. Nicely done. Now we're gonna dangle those hands down, turn that right palm up, left hand can take the side of the chair if you'd like. And from the elbow, inhaling, fingers up towards the ceiling, exhaling, pushing down as if through honey. So as if there's resistance there. Mm -hmm. Option to stay here, and of course we're getting in through the elbow. Option to start to move from the shoulder now. Easy joint, shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers and thumbs as if you're flowing through water. Option to take those right fingertips up and overhead, that's where the left hand comes into support should you want it. If you don't need that support, as you tip over, anchor the right hip down, and we're getting that lateral flexion of the spine here and the length through the right side. Don't forget on that inhale, we are lifting through the crown of the head, reaching with the fingertips as if you had a paintbrush and you were trying to get the smoothest arch. One more. Mm-hmm. And then we'll come all the way back to support. Right hand can take the chair if you'd like as we turn that left palm out from the elbow, inhaling up, again, exhaling down as if there's resistance. And we're connecting this whole movement to the cycle of your breath, inhaling up, exhaling down. Great place to be, stay here if you want to, or start to move from the shoulder. Easy joints. And then your option is 
Two, take those left fingertips up and over. The left hip is anchored, so we're not lifting through the pelvis. So we really get that length through the spine on the left side. Don't forget on that inhale as the fingertips lift, the crown of the head is also lifting. And maybe there's that reaching through the fingertips. Let's take another two or three here. As if we're sweeping a big arch above us. Keep the breath connected to the movement. Always checking in with yourself and noticing how it feels for you. We'll take one more here. Mm -hmm. Coming all the way back through center. Any intuitive movement you need to release tension and hands rest on the top of the legs. If you are sitting into the back of your chair, I highly recommend coming forward a little. Mindful seat, rooting to rise. And then there's broadness here as we start to get down through the spine with flexion and extension. On the inhale, drawing the hands back up towards the pelvis, drawing the shoulder blades back towards each other. That's the inhale. On the exhale, send the fingertips towards the knees as we round. Nicely done. Option to stay there. I'm going to take it step by step, and you can, if you know where you're going, you can already go ahead, of course. On the inhale, consider lifting the chin, but lengthen the back of the neck so the forehead is getting a little higher towards the ceiling. On the exhale, the chin draws in towards the chest. So now we're getting that movement through the cervical spine, which we've done a little bit of. Option to take it a little further down. So on the inhale, the front ribs coming forward, so we're arching the back now. So we squeeze the shoulder blades towards each other. Exhale, push the back of the ribs towards the back of the chair, and we curl in through the belly. Inhaling and exhaling. Option to take it a little further down on the inhale, sending the tailbone out behind us as everything's crunching up in the back body. On the exhale, the back body gets wide as we sit to the back of the pelvis and tuck the tailbone. And you can do as much or as little of any of this as you want. You can even take it down into your feet. Inhaling, imagine driving the heels of your feet back towards the chair. Exhale, push evenly into the feet and you'll notice that you can curl a little bit deeper in through the pelvis there. So pelvic tilts and the legs are getting involved. Inhaling and exhaling. If you want to add into the arms here, let's take opposite arms. Top right, bottom left, drawing the arms back in space. And on the exhale, let's reach in front of you. Fingertips come towards each other and we'll take it in the opposite direction. So it's almost like a big good morning stretch. And then drawing the fingertips as far away from the back of the heart as you can. Inhaling and exhaling. Nicely done. Mm -hmm. Let's take four more breaths, two more either side. You can always rest. Those arms are probably getting a little bit heavy by now. You can always lower the arms. You can always take them back to the tops of your legs. Again, they're just a suggestion. Two more breaths, unless you're resting. Mm -hmm. And then on the next inhale, we're coming all the way back to support and any intuitive movement you need. From here, coming into a gentle twist. So we're now getting the rotation through the spine. Rooting to rise. The inhale is lengthening as always. Exhale, left shoulder back, right forward as we glance to the left. I'm mirroring you. Inhaling back through center. So let the hands slide up and down the legs or be wherever they feel 
is best for them. But no forcing with the hands. So we're not staying there and getting a little more rotation because of the leverage of our hands. You can glance over the back left shoulder if that feels really good in your neck. If it doesn't, no big deal. As you do this, notice if that right hip is creeping forward and we're getting the pelvis involved. So add a little pressure into that right foot and that'll pin down the pelvis so we keep the rotation in the spine. Mm -hmm. Option to stay in movement or last twist, we stay for three breaths. So in movement or stillness, hands resting, wherever you want them to. Anchor the right foot to pin the pelvis in place and we connect with the breath every inhale, we lengthen every exhale, we soften or deepen the twist. Stay for the last exhale here and we release and come back through center. Same thing, other side. Inhale, we lengthen, exhale, glancing to the right. And there's no forcing here. Inhaling through center, exhaling. Nicely done. Option, of course, is to hop the hands or just let them slide up and down if there's too much forcing there. Now we're concerned about that left hip sliding forward, so we're putting a little pressure on that left foot. Option to keep moving. Option for the last three breaths, whenever that is for you, is to twist and stay. Keep some length on the inhale. The exhale is there to soften or deepen the twist. Your choice. What feels right to you. Connect to the breath. So home breath if that suits you. Listen to it coming in and out. So we regulate it. Last exhale. We release and come back through center. Big breath in. Exhale it out. Nicely done. I'm going to take those feet a little bit wider now. External rotation. If you need more support, please slide back on your chair. Above all else, again, we want to be stable. Most of the time, we stay with internal or parallel feet in our life, and we need the full range of motion. That's what we're all about today, is moving through the joints. So, rooting down to rise. We're going to keep focused on this upper body. When we come down to the floor, we're going to come into the lower body. Imagine those lower ribs are a hula hoop. And on the inhale, we're taking them round and forward. We're getting a little arch in the back here. Exhale, round and back as if they could scrape the back of the chair. Inhaling and exhaling. What we're looking for here is fluid movement. So I highly recommend closing your eyes if you feel stable, lowering your gaze. And... Noticing if you can find as much control and smoothness as you did with the breath. So hum breath is very useful for you here. You can get the shoulders, the head, the neck involved, the pelvis. You can even push down into the feet here one at a time as your weight distribution changes. See if you can allow this to be your movement. It's a really important piece, getting some flow. So this is pretty much everything we've been doing all at once here. And functional movement isn't that we do one movement and then stop and then do another movement. Functional movement is where we're putting a whole lot together and we have this control. So keep connected to the breath for another two or three. End of the exhale, let's pause and take those hula hoops around in the opposite direction. And it always takes a little while to get used to this direction. Mm -hmm. You might notice the pelvis is shifting and moving. And again, we're easing movement into the hips here. If anything is uncomfortable, please adjust something. Less repetitions will come to rest. Let this movement be your own. And then at the end of the next exhale, we'll come all the way back through center. 
and then we're bringing the feet back together. Wash the knees a little from side to side. Beautiful job. Rooting to rise. And then when you're ready, we're going to come down to the earth. Gather with you everything you need for the end of your practice and I will see you down there as we get a little more into the lower body. Here we are, down on the earth, and I'll see you down on your back. Knees to the sky, feet to the floor. Feet around a comfortable hip distance. And then when you're ready, simply pick up the hips. Shift them a little closer towards your heels so we get the length in the spine. This is the, uh, the length that we found earlier. And then roll one shoulder blade and another just softly underneath you. Not forcing, just to open up the chest again. Soften the gaze or close the eyes. And we'll take a big breath in. Exhale it out and allow yourself to rest into the earth. Take another couple of breaths just like that. Mm -hmm. And then we come back to that so home breath, that regulated breath, smooth and steady, getting used to that rhythm. And then coming into the joints, we're going to take that right knee in towards the chest, Give it a little hug with your hands, either side of the thigh, underneath the knee, or in front of the shin. One is not better than the other. And then we're going to circle with that ankle. Now we want to get into the feet as well. So point the feet away from you and spread the toes as they come back towards the shin. That way we're getting into the joints through the toes, the feet. We want as much suppleness and strength there as possible. So we're looking for control and steadiness, as well as range of motion. Let's pause and take it around in the opposite direction again, pointing and flexing. The more control we have over our feet and ankles, of course, the more balance we have. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then I'm gonna keep a gentle flex in that ankle as we come back to support. And then the hands can come down by the hips or in a cactus or a T, your choice. From here, on the inhale, we're going to start to send that right foot up towards the ceiling. Now that knee can be towards straight or nice and bent and curl it back in on an exhale. So curl the back of the shin on the back of the calf right into the back of the thigh. Inhaling, we're pushing up. Exhaling, we're drawing down. The more you flex those feet and draw the toes back towards your shin, the more you're activating into the back leg. The softer that foot is, the easier that's going to feel. And again, we're not trying to achieve anything here. We're trying to get that movement through the knee in particular and waking up the back of that leg, of course. Nice. And then the next time that knee comes in, we're gonna take the right hand on the right knee, left arm is out in a cactus here, or a T at shoulder height. Option to stay here, hand to knee. Option to extend the left leg out long along the earth. So the heel to the floor. If this feels too much in your groin, please bend the knee. From here, we're gonna to start to circle the knee in the air, hand to the knee to start with. So the knee is coming up towards the ceiling and then it's curling in towards the chest. So we're trying to draw as perfect a circle as we can. Now, if that feels really good to you, then please stay. If you do not need that right hand on the right knee and you can keep that steady so home breath in the movement, then you can stay there. If you would like to, option is to start to extend that right leg a little further away from you. Even option is to cross it over the left leg in any way. You're going to start to get a little massage over the back of the pelvis here. This is not about the biggest range of motion. 
what we want again is control. So if sending your leg long means that you're getting into momentum, which is swinging instead of control, then keep those circles nice and small. We're starting to build strength as well as that range of motion. Next time that knee comes in towards the chest, we'll pause and take small circles to start with in the opposite direction. Again, hand to the knee if that feels better for you. One is not better than the other. One is not more yoga than the other. Keep the so hum breath steady and smooth and one circle to one cycle of breath. The option, of course, is to extend that leg out or not. Let's take another two or three here. Notice if you need to adjust something. And then we're bringing that knee back through center. Left foot to the floor, knee to the sky, and we're crossing the right ankle over the left thigh. Now the further away that left heel is from your seat, the easier it will be in the right hip. The closer and towards the more intense it is in the right hip. So now we're pushing the right ankle into the left thigh, the right knee away from us. Not so much that we shift the hips. Option to stay here. Imagine that lower belly is drawn all the way down into the earth itself. Keep the breath flowing. Option to stay here, keeping that lower back imprinted on the mat with the belly drawn down and in. If you want to add on, you can gather the left thigh in, take your hands to the side, inside and outside edge of the thigh, behind the knee or in front of the shin. And now what we like to do here is really pull in with the hands, but let that left leg do a lot of the work here. So if you're in thread the needle, which is that left foot off the floor, then the left foot or the left thigh is going in, right ankle and knee pushing away. So the uh, we're not building up tension and tightness in the shoulders, the throat, and certainly not in the facial muscles and jaw. Keeping that breath going. And then when you're ready, at the end of one of your exhales, let's take the foot down to the floor and then release the right leg. Take the feet a little wider and just wash the knees side to side, nice and gently, and we're massaging across the back of the pelvis. And then we come back to center, feet are now hip distance again, and we'll take the same thing on the other side. So the left leg comes in, don't be surprised if this is very different. We gather it in with our hands wherever they're resting, and then we circle through the left ankle. Pointing the toes away from you, flexing the toes as they come towards the shin. So we really are noticing if we're trying to rush through an area, if there's an area that really we have a lot less flexibility there or strength to control the movement. And it's just curious, we're not berating ourselves or creating a story that's causing to go around in the opposite direction. We're just showing up, doing our best, noticing, without judgment, just with a curiosity, like, huh, oh, yeah, that, that area of that movement is challenging for me, interesting. From here, I'm gonna flex those ankles gently, and we're taking the hands down or in a cactus. This is the exhale, and we're curling the heel in towards the seat here. I'm really squeezing the back of the calf into the back of the thigh. On the inhale, we're sending that left leg up towards the ceiling or at a different angle, whatever feels good to you. That leg does not have to be straight, it can be nice and bent, curling it in on the exhale and lengthening. And of course, same as the other side, the more you flex the ankle and flex the toes back towards your shin, then the more intense that is on the back of the left leg. Push into the right foot to anchor the lower back here. And this is a great place to stay. If you want to get into the hip, the next time that knee comes in, we'll take the left hand to the left knee. Right arm is in a cactus here. Option to stay here, option to send that right leg long along the floor to anchor you. Now, if this feels a lot in your groin, as the other side, please bend the right knee. 
arm is starting to create circles. Keep the hand on the knee to start with. Circles with the knee in the air. There's no wrong way to do this. Great place to be. We're trying to, again, look for steadiness, smoothness, anchored into the breath. The option is to release the hand if that feels okay for you. And you can start to extend that left leg a little longer if that feels good. No momentum here. So at any point, if you said pause, you could just pause there. Momentum is when we're swinging something around because we don't feel we have the strength to control it there. It's a great thing to do first thing in the morning. Next time we take that knee in, we're going to go around in the opposite direction. Keep it small to start with. We anchor the movement into the breath. So making sure that you're connected to that breath, that so home breath. And then the option is to allow those movements to get a little bigger, extend the leg, if it feels like you can control it. Again, bigger isn't better here. It's kind of the opposite of what everybody's been telling you all your life. What we want is steadiness, smoothness, flow. Mm -hmm. Next time that knee comes in towards the chest, we'll keep it there. Give it a little hug, bend the right foot, take it to the, bend the right knee, take it to the floor. And we're taking that left ankle to the right thigh. Again, you get to decide if you shift that right heel away or a little closer. Push the left knee and the ankle away from you. Keep connected to the breath. The option is to stay here or gather that right thigh in. We've got thread the needle here. Hands can come wherever they feel is best for you along that right leg. Keep the ankles softly flexed so the knees are nice and safe here. And then let the right foot and the leg do a lot of the work here. So the right thigh is going into the left ankle, left ankle and knee pushing away and we're breathing. Noticing how that feels in the left hip, always taking the strain out of the arms, shoulders, throat, jaw, face, and anywhere else you're building up tension here. And then when you're ready, on an exhale, We'll take that right thigh or right leg down and release the left leg. And from here, we're just washing side to side to side. Nice. And then we'll gather those knees in, giving yourself a little bit of a hug here, rock and rolling, give a little bit from side to side. And then hands to either knee, and we'll take the knees a little bit further apart. So now we're getting into that opening through the groin, through the hips. You can keep those elbows on the floor wherever the hands come to, it's great. You can stay here or half um, full happy baby. So the feet can come up towards the ceiling like you're imprinting your footprints on the ceiling. Hands can come to the thighs, outer shins, outer ankles, or even taking the outer feet. Wide collarbones here, so rolling one shoulder blade and another underneath you, and then send the tailbone down towards the earth. And draw that chin in a little so the back body is really imprinted on the earth. And here we are, happy baby. Now you can rock and roll from side to side, you can even extend one leg and then draw it in and extend the other leg or take both feet out together. There's a whole lot to play with. There's nothing that you can do wrong here as long as you stay connected to the breath, never holding the breath to get just a little bit more range of motion. We keep within the steady flow of the breath. And then when you're ready, if the feet are up towards the ceiling, we'll draw them all the way down again and draw the knees in towards each other. Feet come down to the earth and coming into a supine full body twist. So pick the hips up, shift them towards the right side of the mat. And any twist here that you feel is really great for you, I'm going to take, I'm going to 
guide into bound roots, but if you want to, you can just take the knees parallel and take them off towards the side or lengthen the left leg and take the knee over. Otherwise, we're gonna cross that right thigh over the top of the left, arms in a cactus or a T, keep the right shoulder anchored here, and we take the whole shape over to the left, maybe rolling towards or onto the outside of that left leg. Any support you need underneath that right leg that is over the top of your left, please take it. We're of course getting into the right hip here. Breathing, you get to the side. Do not stay here as if you feel like you're building tension. If it is like that, then shift, move, take another twist so you can soften here. And we're breathing. If that right shoulder is anchored, you can take a gaze over the right shoulder and we breathe. Steady and smooth. Mm -hmm. Not unlike when we sat in the chair. Whole body breaths here, we go all the way down through the belly. And when it feels like it's enough for you, we'll take the gaze to center. Take the knees to center. If you have the bind, we'll unbind, shift the hips back, and then over to the left. Whichever twist you want to take on this side, it does not have to even up from the other side. So again, bound roots, that left leg crosses over. Left shoulder is anchored here into the earth as we take the shape to the right. The left shoulder is lifting. Try and take some support underneath the lower legs or knees, so you're not putting pressure. Let me take the gaze over that left shoulder as we breathe, steady and smooth. Inhaling and exhaling. comes to center, the knees come to center, and we unbind. And then setting the pelvis back through center, any last movements you wish to finish up your practice, and then we'll come into relaxation. So maybe the feet go wider, knees in towards each other, we've got constructive rest. Or maybe you want to take another shape out long or spreading wide like a starfish. You get to decide if you have it available, maybe an extra layer on, depending on what the temperature's like where you are. And it's all about your comfort here. So adjusting maybe a pillow under your head, a blanket over top of you, maybe um, some support underneath the back of your thighs that's going to ease your back somewhat. So settling in here to your most comfortable shape. It doesn't have to be a certain way. Adjusting a pillow underneath your head or firm blankets. Maybe taking some support underneath the back of the thighs or knees that can help soften the lower back. Extra layers can allow the body to feel soft and warm. And when you're ready, when you're settled in, just notice if there's any last thing you can offer yourself in comfort. And then when you're ready, we'll take a big breath in. Exhale it out, slow and, slow and long. And let's take another couple just like that. Big breath in. Exhale it out. Uh -huh. Another couple of breaths just like that. And then we 
you release the breath altogether. Release the bones down into the earth. And we release the skin. The muscles. The bones. All of the soft tissues and organs. Relaxing and softening the muscles of the face, especially around the eyebrows and behind and around the eyes. Releasing your back teeth so they're parted, tongue soft. Starting to allow your body to soften and melt down into the support underneath you. Like an icicle in the sunshine. Releasing pockets of tightness, tension. Allowing thoughts, concerns, and worries to drift away and dissolve like sugar in water. You can stay here for as long as you like, and if you wish to stay for longer, allow my words to drift over and away from you. So you can stay in your depth of relaxation for as long as you wish to. If you wish to finish up your practice, start to be mindful of the support underneath your body. Notice your whole self from your toes to your fingertips to the tip of your nose and the crown of your head. And start to notice the breath dancing with the body, inhaling and exhaling and how the body expands on the inhale and softens on the exhale in your own gentle rhythm. Start to allow the inhale breath to get a little deeper Exhale, let that energy of the breath settle down and into your body. Every inhale, we infuse ourselves with energy, drawing it in. On the exhale, we just let it land and stay. So we start to build up this awakening breath. Stay with that soft, lazy feel. And maybe you wish to stay where you are for the rest of your practice or stay for longer, or if you do wish to come to a different shape to finish up, slowly 
intuitively move in a way that you are mindful of how it feels to you as you bring yourself into whatever shape or hand gesture feels good to you. And again, know that there is no particular way you need to be. Let's settle down and into whatever shape that we've taken. And take a big breath in. On the exhale, lower the gaze, soften the gaze, close the eyes and dip the chin towards the heart, whatever you're comfortable with. Let's take a big breath in again. Exhale it out. And thank yourself for your practice today. Whatever you discovered today about yourself, your body, your breath, Take it with you into your week ahead. Thank you so much for being here. From my heart to yours, namaste.